This is the thrift shop I visit when I'm in the mood to look for vintage eye candy, and I always start at this rack in the front corner of the store where they keep all of the embroidery. It's kind of a mix. They don't separate the hand-embroidered stuff from the mass-produced machine-embroidered, but that's okay because I can totally look through and see what there is to see. The prices usually are not bad, so if I find something that is so special I want to bring it home, I can do that. This piece, it is a showstopper with that applique, and I'm sure that it is a specific style or technique. I just don't know what it is, aside from it's gorgeous. And this piece here with the blue that we're getting to, I have it's almost like that applique bias tape that I found other small pieces. I'm just intrigued by the subject matter and all of that hand stitching. It is so pretty. Not something I needed to bring home into my life forever, but it's pretty to look at. This piece was painted and I hadn't seen anything quite like that. And this piece, it's different subject matter. It is a different color and a different technique, but I kind of wonder if that didn't come from the same household as the piece above it. I play that game at the thrift store that did this come from the same household as that thing over there. Sometimes you can be almost positive it did and sometimes you just don't know. That house has been there every time I've been to the shop lately. I always go the exact same route through this store and look at this shelf because it's got the cute vintage sewing goodies. I thought for a minute that there was potpourri in under that crochet, but it's actually a floral printed quilting cotton, which is a really clever idea. They keep on the shelf kind of the vintage -y vintage. And like that dollhouse bed, I am sure that that is from a specific vintage dollhouse that the person who is looking for it will be thrilled to find. I have no idea what it is myself. I keep looking at these vintage magnets and think, wondering if they would make needle minders. I know that the existing magnet isn't going to hold my needle, but if I glued magnets on it, maybe. I had this exact Barbie-sized hutch when I was little. Hadn't thought of it for years. It's one of those things you see in the thrift store that sparks all kinds of memories. Don't know where mine went because we saved all the Barbie stuff and the dream, the, not the dream house, the townhouse. But I don't think that hutch survived and I don't know why. Maybe because it wasn't real Mattel brand Barbie. I keep in different shops looking at these old decanters and thinking they would go great in a mantelscape. And then I keep reminding myself that first I don't drink, second I don't have room on the mantel keep finding these couches. Now, what is someone going to do with just the cushions? Dog bed, maybe? They price their cross-stitch magazines at a dime a piece, and I already have, I think, most of these in my stash. This Lacey and Laddie, I see those everywhere. I don't know if they were super, super popular back in their day, and everybody was stitching them. I love the morning villa this one, except I don't like the cows, which, what kind of sense does it make that I love the background and not the main element of the piece? I did have the common sense to leave it behind and not come up with some crazy scheme to like stitch it and leave the cows out. I also have lots of country scenes in my stash. Even though most of these are duplicates of what I already have, I do look through because there could be something that I don't have. And I've already got, I'm stitching apples. I've been stitching that apple forever, but I might want to stitch more apples again. That one I am pretty sure is a Paula Vaughn, but not positive. I think I did look in the magazine later and confirm that it was. Here's another pretty stocking that I don't have or don't think I have. I don't know if there just weren't that many 
issues of cross stitch and country crafts or if I keep seeing the same hand I do keep seeing the same handful over and over and over wasn't working flipping through them sideways in the bin so I did pull them out to take a closer look I don't know why lately I want to stitch fire so that stocking with the fireplace definitely came home with me at a dime a piece if I accidentally get a duplicate I'm not going to worry about it Here's another Paula Vaughn, but I know for a fact that I have that one at home already. And I think this haunted house came home with me because if there's one Halloween pattern, there must be others. These piggies, my great grandmother, when she was in the nursing home in the very last days of her life, made me a piggy bank and it was from the same mold as these little piggies. Poured the greenware for the piggy bank my grandma made me it was way way thinner than poured ceramics should be it is so fragile I don't know how I have kept it unbroken for probably going on 40 years now and it is the last I am positive it is the last surviving thing my great-grandma ever made and so part of me kind of almost thought I should buy one of those little unpainted pigs to have just in case I get the idea that I want to make something like grandma made I left them behind there were so many I have a feeling they'll still be there later if I go back and change my mind which so far I'm not doing but you never know flip through the quilting patterns and this one is crab apple hills over the river and through the woods I love these patterns with their embroidery and their piecing and this one has been on my wish list for years and years so I was just tickled pink to find it at the thrift shop for a dollar it's not one of her hugely expensive embroidery patterns but hey I will take what I can get probably would have bought myself a copy sooner or later so having it in my possession makes me happy and I know my mom wants to stitch that one too so one or both of us will get around to using it or we won't because we're going to be spending so much hour so many hours on the bigger projects here's a whole big bag of that blanket yarn and it was priced high i don't know how tangled that is i have no interest in trying that technique myself anyway so didn't look at it too close i love how this place organizes all of their cross stitch or not their cross stitch their craft stuff so there is a conveniently labeled bin of embroidery and cross stitch patterns I find things here now and then they had some random pieces of Ada that were stuck together into one bundle and they had somebody's abandoned whip that I don't think it had a chart today was the day for abandoned whips without charts nothing really exciting on this visit but then I'm going to insert a picture of what I found here a couple of days later I swooned when I found these but then I realized that the Thomas Kincaid kit was that embellished cross stitch where most of it is a pre-printed background and the same with the base so I didn't buy either of those this was a set of four of these little horse and carriages and I am sure that there is something you could use those as center blocks for a quilt or do something wonderful they weren't all finished but it's such an easy pattern you could figure out the horse I just didn't feel the need to bring them home and do them that myself is this lavender and lace I feel like I have seen this before somewhere someone did so much stitching and it's a shame that the pattern wasn't with it because that's going to make it hard for someone else to pick up and finish and that should be finished not by me but i hope someone else comes into the shop and wants to tackle that one they always have vintage baby clothes and i've brought some home over the years i don't know why because i don't know any better i guess I always look through this shop like I said when I'm in the mood for vintage eye candy because they 
almost always have some kind of stitchery or something. And I looked at the pillowcases because I want to get some to make more reusable shopping bags. These were all well-used pillowcases. I'm looking for the ones that got put on someone's shelf and never used, but didn't find them on this trip. I don't know why I keep looking because the linens are always a little bit grungy. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and I'll be back with you again soon.